it's a, it's a film and it's a soundtrack which has um, stayed t- through time. Okay, thank you, Ken, for joining again. And today we're going to talk about the movie Grease. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The film Grease. Uh, I mean, a film which has got so many um, amazing songs. I mean, they're all... I mean, pretty much every single one of those songs was a big hit in the UK after the film came out. As one fil- as one song left the charts, another one came in. And I'd say there's probably three or four of those songs today which are still quite often played on our main radio stations. So it's, it's, a, it's a film and it's a soundtrack which has um, stayed t- through time. I mean, you know, we are now in 2022, so it's... Um, it's it's yeah, 40 years, 42 years since it first came out, which is frightening because I think I was 16 when it came out. And I remember actually queuing around the block to uh, to see the film. It was such a big hit. That was the first time I'd ever queued to, to watch a film. You know, prior to that, you just, you just kind of walk in, but there's queues around the block to go and watch this film. And um, yeah, everybody, everybody knew the songs. Everybody was singing the songs and everybody was talking about the film. As a film, you could write the script on the back of, we would say in the UK, in the back of a fag packet, on the back of a cigarette packet. I mean, you know, half an envelope, you could write the script. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl. You're a fake and a phony and I wish I'd never laid eyes on you. Whoa. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl. Boy conquers girl, boy girl get together, boy girl hopefully live happy, happily ever after. That's the script. I mean, there's no rocket science in the script. There's no, there's no depth in this film. It's 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 super shallow. What holds this film together, I think, are the protagonists. Uh, you know, um, John Travolta and Olivia Newton John, or as she was called in the UK, Olivia Neutron Bomb, because she's just such a sexy icon. Um, it's it's the chemistry between the pair of or this 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 relationship between the pair of them and the songs. I think outside of that, I couldn't really dissect this film um, into sort of you know the, the any subplots or any sort of deep meanings. It is what it is. It's 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 a fun film with a lot of fantastic songs uh, showing an era in America in the in the the fifties when the cars looked stunning, the dresses were beautiful, the whole styling, the image was just um, it was I just think an incredibly lovely period of time in terms of uh, in terms of dress style. It's pretty thin in terms of plot. Uh, it's pretty big in terms of color and in terms of some great dance sequences. Uh, and some just some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant songs, which even today I still sing. When I was watching watching this, I was singing along with some of those songs. I'm not going to sing now because it would be against the Geneva Convention. My singing <laughs> is so bad, but absolutely a fun. I mean, I don't know. I mean, how, what's, because obviously it's American culture. It's American high school. Very, very different to when I was at school at that particular period. I would have been roughly the same kind of age as... Mm-hmm. As as as, um, as Sandy and Danny in this particular film, I think they were a lot older. They were being played. They were in their yeah. Early they 20s. were. They so were. So I was a perfect kind of age for me because I was roughly the same age or pretty similar to the characters. And obviously, British schools and British high schools are very different to America. So this was a, an image of American high schools, which for me was just amazing, just enchanting. Just I, you know, if you have an image of somewhere you want to go. If I had the TARDIS, if I could go back in time, that's a period of time I'd love to go back to simply because I just think it looks a very intriguing period of time to, to live in, especially from the UK. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's your country. It's how your country is portrayed. It's how other people see you. I mean, what's your perception? But I was probably around my daughter's age now. She's now 12. And I was I was you know, what we call junior high school. And I was very excited to go to high school. So I was watching this movie and other movies like The Brefix Club, 16 Candles, and all kinds of movies about high school. And really excited about like, oh, this awesome idea of high school. And I will have to say, high school was never as fun as what it looks like in this movie or any of those other movies. 
So it's also this look back of the 50s where I, I have the perception that life was a lot more fun. You had all these places that the teenagers could hang out and it seemed like they had a better, they had like these diners, like they have the frosty diner that they go to hang out. And that, we have none of that now. Um, that was gone when I was a teenager. We had only the malls to hang out in. And the high school, I'll have to say, I don't think it was ever as fun as that, but it definitely isn't as fun now. Uh, but that was like my look at it. It was like, oh, this future, I'm going to go to high school and high school is going to be like that. Um, watching it again, the first time I watched it again after like some almost 20 some years, I guess, was, um, you know, just like last week. And I have to say the first time watching it, I was like, oh, what is this? this voted the best music of all times. And I wasn't I wasn't getting it. I love the music still. Uh, but then I watch it again and it grows on you. It has a bunch of like subtle humor. Do you mind if I stay around a little longer, Vi? No, suit yourself. Wow. What? Well, I hate to tell you this, but your hair looks like an Easter egg. To it, that, that kind of grows on you. The, the musical numbers and all the dress, I do love that. The poodle skirts that they have on um, and all of the beautiful numbers that they have. The really crazy, like when the they have the song about the high school beauty school dropout and they have the mm. girls with the rollers that are like, oh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so it's just this beautiful visualization and beautiful colors and beautiful costumes. So I, I love the music to it. The plot, again, like you said, it can be written like on the back of a napkin or whatnot or a cigarette package or whatever you say. I mean, that's, that's interesting because for me, that kind of, image of the American high school is is what I'd like to go and see but you I mean a lot of films actually portray high schools sort of in a similar vein it's interesting that they have um, sexed it up in terms of the way it really is or isn't young people discovering themselves and wanting to be included in groups wanting to have you know image being very very important you mentioned it prior to us, us chatting, the fact that within the high schools in America, you have these groups of people. Now, I don't really remember that in British schools. So um, it seems like within American schools, certain, I mean, certainly one of the things I am aware of is that the sports side of things in some of the American schools is super important. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't say that was the case when I was at school. I mean, if you did sport, you did sport. There was no groups of people participated in various sports and it was it was front it, it was it was forced upon us to do any kind of sport was forced upon us it was like no thank you I don't want to do that so it's interesting that in America people sort of uh, elected to to kind of get involved in various sports it might have to do with uh, the, the better climate in some parts of America I don't know it could be so we have I mean when I was in high school we had the jocks were the sports people we have the snobs or the popular group um, we would have the nerds. We would have, um, I think that, that Danny would have been kind of like um, the punks, but he was obviously the greaser in this movie. But so we had all these different cliques. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's interesting you're talking about your own experience at high school. I mean, so long ago since I was there, I actually can't remember. Um, I remember it being a period of time when I went through school and then into what was called sixth form, which was 16 to 18. Um, it was about... Yeah, we, we made friends and what have you, but we never groups. I can't remember really being part of any any kinds of groups. So uh, a culture I have difficulty kind of getting my head around. Thing in the sports aspect, yes, very big. When I was in high school, I was there just to hang out because that was the place to hang out on a Friday night, go to the to the um, football game. In any case, I would go there every Friday night just to hang out and see where the party yeah. was. Uh, but it was definitely still the place that all the teenagers are going to because that's the only place we have as opposed to in this movie they have all these places these little diners and and these different places that they could go to uh, the, the kind of changing slightly is the the cars and how big a part of American culture the cars are and it would appear I mean they're driving pretty damn young I mean what is the age of driving in the states I don't know what what is the end age of high school um, what, what are the ages? So the, the, the age of driving now is 16, 16 and a half, you can have your license. At 16, you can get your learner's permit. And in 16 and a half, you can get your your driving, your driving driver's license. Yeah, it's, it's 17 for your provisional license. And then I think it's 18 before you can take your test. But I mean, I think the thing which, which strikes me is the, is the car culture, is the fact that everything is based around the car. Um, you know, there's the drive in. Come on, Paulie, watch your head. Hey, watch your head. Move it up. You're like a meatball in here. 
Okay, let's go find the chicks. Uh, there's the cafes, there's everything is, a lot of the plot is also based around the car and people meeting uh, and doing things around cars. Because obviously they, they, one of the guys gets an old car and one of the big songs is when they're, they're doing this car, high dramatic can be, uh, um, it can be high dramatic, it can be something matic or something matic, I can't remember the exact lyrics, but it's based around them gaining their freedom, I think, and having the wheels and being able to venture further than just, you know, their own street or something. Uh, I suppose that was part of American culture at that time in terms of the freedom. I mean, absolutely. Even when I was a teenager, I couldn't wait to get my license because it gave me that freedom, the ability to go anywhere. Uh, but then it was a matter of freedom. I mean, I suppose the other thing, there's the scene where they're in the, the the car park and they're all kissing in the backs of the cars. They're all sort of, they're all getting down to some sort of some kind of monkey business, shall we say? Yep. And I suppose probably in those days, it was probably the only place you could be alone with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, with your partner. So, um, and the only place that kind of thing would probably happen because you know in those days, uh, that thing, you know, that form of the relationship would have been probably frowned upon by by parents. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I just look at that too and I think, I kind of feel like maybe the 50s were a little bit more prim and proper than they show in that movie. They almost seems like the movie was made in the 70s and the teenagers are behaving like they are in the 70s, but they're, they're all dressed up and kind of like living this life of, of the 1950s. Yeah, I, again, I, it's a lovely point that, I mean, how much of that story really is is based in the 70s but actually placed in the 50s because it's visually just much more exciting just more much more interesting than the 70s um as you say i mean i suspect you're right that from what i understand of british culture of the time as well i mean in britain it was motorbike because that was just all you could afford yeah you know you know that which is why we have the mods and the rockers why we have the turn up club we have in britain it was motorbikes uh, similar kind of thing. They'd go to cafe bars on the motorbikes and the, where they'd meet up with all of their friends. Um, we didn't have the money. <laughs> people didn't have the cars. So, you know, we have something kind of similar, sim same kind of thing. That was the only place that people could meet. The freedom of the motorbike, the freedom to go to cafes and meet up with friends, meet up with girls, meet up with boys, meet up with the opposite sex outside of, outside of their own schools. So potentially people from slightly further afield. Um, but yeah, I, I think you might have a point in that it was a great way of bringing in the risque, risque sex, sexy kind of or sexual kind of uh, connotations and um, an innuendo into a period of time when it probably wasn't around or probably mm -hmm. less so. So you, you, you transplant the 1970s into the 1950s because you can you can get away with those kinds of things and still have a visually interesting and fun film. And another uh, another interesting thing that I was reading uh, was another reviewer of the movie who said it was kind of like a remake of Oklahoma, which I've only seen Oklahoma once. Um, that at the end when they're driving off in the hot rod, it's like the same as like when they're driving off in the shirt Surrey with the fringe on top of. Uh, but apparently it's kind of like that. The reviewer, um, I think it was for the uh, Dallas Tribune, was saying that it was kind of a remake of the Oklahoma uh, musical. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, I can see some of the similarities. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. Um, but again, what film isn't a remake of something else? Right, exactly. There's nothing new. To be perfect, there's very, very little new. Um, everything is a remake of something. Everything is, is stolen from another film somewhere along there. Somebody's stolen a bit, a bit of this script, a bit of that script. So it, um, I can kind of see where they're thinking about Oklahoma. I can see how that's kind of happening. Um, I mean, I'm going to change film tag here. I'm going to say um, Back to the Future. The high school dance and the car and that kind of environment, again, portraying a very similar period of time, is, is so important to the film and the relationships. There was, when I was watching the film uh, Grease again, a couple of other things popped into my head about sort of similar films where the high school dance and um, the high school hierarchy in terms of the groups, the jocks, the, the, the you know the popular girls, the less popular girls, the geeks seems to run through quite a lot of um, films, American films. Yeah. 
I mean, if we go back to the characters, I think, you know, we see the development, because obviously it's over a, a school year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we should come out of the summer holiday, we get back to school, uh, high school, and then it, 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 they eventually leave. So they have the, the, the final, the, the dance, and then they leave and, and, and what have you. But you see the characters are, they're very much trying to portray, or they're trying to much portray themselves to their friends. They're trying to be part of a group. They're trying to be part of this clique. They are, they're wanting to be included. Um, you know, within within their own group, they have these. In terms of the dress of the T birds and the pink ladies and all that, they they. How do you put this? They are, they're definitely after being included within their friends, being included, being included as part of a group. Mm-hmm. And again, something I can't remember when I was that age. Those kind of dress groups happening, possibly a little later for me. If I would say when. Um, that form of dress became important. Again, if I run back slightly into the 60s in the UK, the 50s and the 60s, in terms of the mods and the rockers, the bikers, they had their own styles and people really wanted to associate with one group or another group. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, 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 see, you see also the development during that school year of um, Sandy and Danny and the rest of the, the, the cast developing and becoming um, bigger kind of people in their own right. I mean, there's not much character development in in the film, I think. It's all quite shallow. Um, You know, I think personally the film is really about, it's it's, it's a vehicle for the songs. Mm -hmm. The characters are really, they are super shallow. And when they do start to gain some kind of character development, it's not particularly, it's not, it's not very deep in terms of the character development. It's just enough to keep the film moving from from, from, from the beginning to the end. Uh, so you don't kind of lose, you don't sort of lose, I suppose, touch with the characters. It's all, it is all super superficial. There's nothing, um, there's nothing about those characters which gives you any real understanding as to them. I mean, Sandy comes in and she looks like she comes from a very prim and proper, very well brought up family. The rest of the girls, they're a little more streetwise, I would say. But by the end of the film, Sandy has kind of, she's changed and has become a little more, she wants to fit in, become part of the group or the groups. She wants to associate herself more with the people she's now friends with i mean what's your perception on that how do you how i mean do you see that? yeah i see both of them both danny kind of like going off and trying to be an athlete to kind of like impress her because she's dating a jock or or an athlete right um and then him getting that at that last scene he's got the letter like the the, the sweater with a letter now it would be a jacket with a letter like the varsity letter that he ended up being part of a team and got that varsity letter it is Zuko. You hey, gotta be hey, kidding, man! man. Hey, then whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, what is this, Halloween? Where did you swipe this letterman sweat, huh? My <laughs> tools were out stealing hubcaps, so I let it in track. Um, and then his group kind of teasing him for that, but he's trying to be accepted by Sandy. And then Sandy asking, um, uh, was it Betty or what was her, the, the, the um, high school, beauty school dropout girl? Yes, yes, yeah. Any case, asking, can you redo me? Because she wants to now be... To be accepted probably by the group, but more be accepted by Danny. So she's going to make herself into a hot rod chick and, you know, end up showing up at the end. And he's just like, I think the song's like, I'm on fire, like I'm electrified and stuff. Um, so then they have their whole thing. And she's got leather pants, which apparently I think um, they had to be sewn on because in the, I don't know whether it was that she might have like, you know, when you're trying to get into something that tight, they had to be sewn on. Apparently. I thought it was. I thought it was sprayed on. I thought it yeah. was sprayed it. I mean, it's, I mean, but she's never worn them since, and they were something that had to be sewn on for that dance, for that last number. Um, but she's dressed up like this biker chick, this hot rod um, chick in the end, and to kind of like be making herself into the kind of girl that Danny would probably be more attracted to, or be more part of like somebody that he would date, as opposed to being this all American prim and proper girl. Or Australian prim and proper girl. Or Australian, right. Because the part originally was a musical where it was an American, but they changed it to an Australian, almost an exchange student, because of the fact that 
it was easier for Olivia Newton-John to just play an Australian who moved to America and not to try to figure out an American accent. Oh, okay, okay. Didn't realize that. That's interesting because, as I understand, she's actually British. Uh, British right. Karen. Right, she's British, but apparently she must have lived enough of her life, I think, like if Olivia Newton-John was born in, born in Britain, but probably spent a lot of time in Australia. She sounded Australian in the movie. Yeah, I think so. I think her parents are British, but she was brought up there, but I think her par- her, her nationality at that particular point was British. I, I do remember hearing her on a TV show saying, oh, I'm, you know, I was playing on Australia. I'm Australian, but I am British by birth. But um, it makes sense that you know, to, to just stick with your accent. And actually, I, I, I think it, it helps in terms of the storyline as well. Why not? Yeah. You know, there, there are little bits where you see her and she looks very out of place between probably her own culture, where she's come from, and now being in this American culture with all of these very brash, very almost know-it-all girls who are kind of ahead of her age-wise in terms of their knowledge of boys or the potential knowledge of boys or their perceived knowledge of boys and obviously yeah. the, the guy is exactly the same their perceived knowledge of girls at that particular point um it, it's i mean it only just touches upon these things but i mean i i didn't get all of the references because the the, the language there is a slight language difference between the uk and the us so one mm-hmm. or two of this the references i didn't get i mean if if we're looking at this again as something which could be watched by foreign students it's probably a little more challenging in places i think as a as a language film um it's it's quite fast paced relatively fast paced in terms of some of the other films we've looked at so but i still think it's a great film because visually it's very it's everybody i think even even if you've all the songs are pretty well known, regardless, I think, around the world. So, and the storyline is super simple. Uh, and I think the the dialogue on the whole is quite, is quite simple, but I think um, given the fact that a native, as a native, there are some of the, the references I didn't get. I just kind of don't understand that because it was obviously either one of the era, the 50s, or two, very much an American saying. Um, there was a couple of things which was uh, cruising for a bruising, which I picked up at that age, cruising for a bruising, and um, that's my name, don't wear it out, which I still use. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> and I think some of it is definitely American um, slang or different things, some things that might have been said, you know, back in the 50s or 70s that they don't say now. But also I think, yes, people, people kind of looking at this as maybe English is not their first language, I think it might be more difficult, as you said, but I, I also think that it's very popular around the world. People, it's been dubbed in all kinds of languages, so people have watched it. And they probably, the music was probably in English, but the dialogue was dubbed in their language, so they know the storyline. So it's like me when I'm watching, sometimes I watch things that I know in English and I watch them dubbed, I watch them in Spanish because it's easier yeah. for me because I already know the storyline. Yeah. Um, so I kind of feel like, although the, the dialogue might be fast paced. It might be harder because there might be some, you know, idioms or some expressions that they might not know. They know the basic storyline. And as you said, the plot isn't very, you know, very complex. <laughs> Absolutely not. And uh, I think if, if, if as a film, it, it's also entertaining and it is an entertaining film. I mean, like I say, it's completely vacuous. You look at it, I looked at it and just thought, it was an hour and a half, hour and 35 minutes, and it ripped through. I mean, uh, I watched it, and the time just passed really quickly, partly because, like I said, I was singing along with the songs. I knew all the songs, and um, there was nothing to get your head around. It's, it's, like, it's like chewing gum. It's like McDonald's. It's like, it's like I don't know. It's, it's just something you consume without any real energy. You just take in. You enjoy it, and then you just forget it as you walk away from it you just the only thing you take away and it's because they're so much part of our music culture now other songs that's you know outside of that the, the storyline is 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 definitely not something which which sticks with you as something which is going to make you think heavily about the world um it is it is what it is it's just a, a, a rip-roaring tale of of youth of american high school of cars of youngsters teetering on that sort of experience of sexual exploration 
um, a freedom of um, gaining gaining their own self, gaining a sense of who they are, and also gaining identity. Um, so yeah, I mean, so I absolutely have to recommend Greece. It's just one of those films which is a must see. I think because a lot of people will already know the soundtrack, and yes, it's it's going to be possibly a little more challenging for some people, but it's just a great fun film to watch. It's a great bubblegum film to watch. It's 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 not mind taxing in any way, and it's just an entertaining hour and a half. And and I thoroughly enjoyed watching it again. So a great choice of film to watch. Brilliant. Well, I look forward to the next uh, the next film. What will our next film be, by the way? Have you have you made any any, any yeah? Decisions? So next month, next month, February second is Groundhog Day here in the United States. So I figured that would be a great film. It's um, a great film for people learning English too, because there's like a little bit of repetition in it. So and something that is celebrated here in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Yeah, well, I, Philip, I have seen the film a few years back. Um, I have a DVD on order. It's winging its way to me now. So hopefully I will have had the chance to watch Groundhog Day a couple of times and get myself a little more acqu- acquainted with uh, with the plot again. It's it's a few years since I last saw it. And also, um, yes, so the next time around, you can explain a little bit more about Groundhog Day because obviously it's a very, it's an American thing. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Although the expression now, I think, has kind of permeated into our language, into the English language. So, yeah, Groundhog Day is one of those days. It's, it's Groundhog Day. So, yeah, be interesting to know how and where it comes from. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing the film. It's been, again, an absolute pleasure talking to you again about another brilliant film, Greece. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.